One of the things that's really interesting about this church, this is Trinity Episcopal Church, was built at the end of the 1890s. And it has about 140, 142 different sculptures on the outside of the building. And uh, along the outside near the roof are gargoyles. And every place there is a gargoyle on the outside of the building, there's a corresponding angel here on the inside of the building, a stone carved angel. So it makes for an interesting um, juxtaposition of characters. You have the evil leaving the church. The gargoyles are all moving away from the church, showing that there's no place for evil within the church. And then you have the angels up here, and most of them are holding musical instruments or singing and uh, pointed into the church. I've always had an interest in architectural photography since I was really young. I have an interest in history in general. So I'm publishing a book called Guardians of Detroit. It's a first of its kind survey of architectural sculpture in Detroit. As I started working, it grew and grew, and now we're at about 350 pages, and I'm leaving things out <laughs> that I'd really like to include because there is just so much. Detroit has such an incredible wealth of architectural sculpture. A lot of that information is available right here. The Burton Library at the uh, main library, the Detroit Public Library, the main library across from the DIA. There is a library at Historic Trinity Lutheran Church on Gratiot called the Dow Library. That's spelled D-A-U, not D-O-W. And it has to do with, uh, Dow was a, a pastor at the church and he started a library about the church itself and it grew to encompass all the different churches in Detroit with information about them. A lot of information there. When you're talking about architectural sculpture in Detroit, everybody or almost everybody has heard of Corrado Parducci. He's responsible for architectural sculpture on almost every major building that went up between the 20s, starting in the 20s and into the 30s. He originally worked in New York, came here to work on a project, got so much work that he stayed and did an incredible amount of work on these buildings, but there's, there's a lot of people before and after. Uh, Giza Marodi was brought here from Hungary to do the sculpture on the Fisher Building. He, he wanted to create a whole new style of artwork for that building, and it's, his style was based on old Hungarian styles, but also he brought his own sensibility to it. So that's some incredible stuff. Marshall Fredericks, who did the Spirit of Detroit statue, everybody is familiar with that statue, did the work on the Rackham Memorial. And it's a whole program of sculpture that uh, the Rackham Educational Memorial Building. What's really interesting about doing the research about these buildings is finding the stories of the, the sculptors, the way Corrado Parducci worked 80, 90 hours a week, slept at his studio most days during the boom years because he had so much work. There's a couple of copper statues on top of the old Wayne County building. They're called Quadrigue. They're women in a chariot being pulled by horses. And one of them was damaged in the wind in uh, the 1970s. And Marshall Fredericks had kind of appointed himself the guardian of public art in Detroit. And when he found out about it, he went up there and examined them. Uh, they took down the pieces that were damaged. One of the arms was bent and a piece had fallen off. And they, they, he took those pieces back to his studio and fixed them, and then they went and put them back up. So it's kind of a neat story about how uh, one of the more modern artists fixed one of the older treasures of Detroit. There's a church in Detroit called Fort Street Presbyterian Church. It's one of the first buildings featured in the book. And on the, the one side, the side that expo is exposed to traffic, there are some faces up along the cornice that are kind of interesting to see, kind of unique. And the other side of the building is hidden from view from the street by a, um, a community house that was put up afterwards. It's also part of the church. So I, I figured there must be some pictures there, some sculpture there on that side of the building. And I went inside and asked, and they gave me access, and the only way you can see these faces is to go out a window and onto the roof of the community building, and then there's a ladder that goes up to another level, a steel ladder, and they're really, really unique faces, uh, very interesting expressions, 
interesting ones wearing a bowler cap with a, a little monocle. And they're just really neat things that you can't see from the street, haven't been able to, no one's been able to see them except from inside the church for almost 100 years. I see a building and I start to wonder when it, when it has architectural sculpture on it, I start to wonder why is it there, what does it mean, what does it represent. Obviously it's there to be decorative, but it's also the decoration has meaning. So I start to wonder about that and uh, that's what got me interested in the first place is wondering about the stories. You don't see it all at once. You see one or two things that really stand out and then as you walk around you start seeing more and more. And that's really exciting to me.